Hello everyone, let's analyze. So today we're going to talk about the triangle inequality. Geometrically speaking, the triangle inequality states that the sum of the lengths of two sides of a triangle is greater than or equal to the length of the third side. In terms of real numbers, the triangle inequality states that the absolute value of a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Now to prove this inequality carefully, we need, for example, the definition of the absolute value function. So for any real number x, the absolute value of x is itself if x is non-negative, or the negation if x is negative. Of course, another way of thinking about the absolute value is that it's the absolute distance from zero, where distance is a non-negative term. Now, to make our way towards the triangle inequality and some other properties of the absolute value, we're going to need a lemma. For all real numbers x, x is less than or equal to its absolute value, and negative x is less than or equal to its absolute value. Now, of course, we know from the definition that one of those inequalities is an equality. So let's do this in two cases, x non-negative and x negative. Case one, x is non-negative. Well, in that case, by definition, x equals its absolute value. So rather trivially, x is less than or equal to its absolute value, specifically equal to. Also negative x, if x is non-negative, negative x is non-positive. And if it's non-positive, it's less than or equal to x which equals the absolute value, implying by transitivity that negative x is less than or equal to the absolute value of x. So we've got case one squared away. Let's go to case two, where x is negative. By definition, negative x equals the absolute value, implying rather trivially that negative x is less than or equal to the absolute value, specifically equal to. Now, we also know that if x is negative, negative x is positive, which means x is less than negative x, which equals the absolute value. And by transitivity, x is less than or equal to the absolute value, specifically less than. And we've proven our result. Hopefully, when we saw that lemma, we said, well, of course, that's straightforward. X either is its absolute value or it is less than. Now, let's also define the square root. We've mentioned the square root a few times. In one of the previous lectures, we talked about the square root of 2, specifically the diagonal of a 1 by 1 box. And the fact that, for example, the square root of 2 is guaranteed to exist by the least upper bound property. But let's give a precise definition. If x is non-negative, then a is the square root if and only if a is non-negative and a squared is x. So it means precisely what you think it means, except that we're going to stick specifically to non-negative terms. If we were to get into negative terms, we'd get into complex numbers, and this is real analysis. Okay, so some theorems or uh, properties, provable properties of the absolute value is that the absolute value of a times b is the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. The absolute value of a is less than or equal to a number epsilon if and only if a is greater than or equal to negative epsilon and less than or equal to epsilon. Another way of writing this statement is to say that A 
is in the closed interval negative epsilon to epsilon. Now we come to the third property, which is the triangle inequality. And the fourth property, which is often called the reverse triangle inequality, which says that the absolute value of the difference of the absolute values is less than or equal to the absolute value of the difference. So let's prove statement one. So in statement one, which is an equality statement, we're going to use some equalities that were proven or will be proven in your homework. One is that the absolute value of a number is equal to the square root of its square. Now, AB squared is AB times AB. And by associativity and commutativity, AB times AB is A times A times B times B, which is A squared times B squared. So I get equality there. The fact that I can split the square root into the square root of a squared times the square root of b squared. That's something you'll prove in your homework. And the square root of a squared is the absolute value of a, right? That's the result we used in the first equality. The square root of b squared is the absolute value of b. And that proves statement one. Now let's prove statement two. Notice it's an if and only if statement, so we actually have to prove two things. We have to prove the forward and the reverse direction. Let's start with the reverse direction. Let's suppose that A is in the closed interval negative epsilon to epsilon. In other words, A is greater than or equal to negative epsilon and less than or equal to epsilon. Well, if A is non-negative, then the absolute value of A equals A by definition which we're supposing, you see right here, is less than or equal to epsilon, which is exactly what we want to show. So for non-negative A, we have our result. What about for negative A? Well, for negative A, the absolute value of A equals negative A. Negative A is less than or equal to positive epsilon by taking this inequality and multiplying both sides by negative one. So negative a is less than or equal to epsilon, which again is what we want to show. And while well, these are the only two cases, a is either non-negative or negative. In both cases, we get that if a is in the closed interval negative epsilon to epsilon, then the absolute value of a is less than epsilon. Now for the forward direction, suppose that the absolute value of a is less than or equal to epsilon. From the previous lemma, a is less than or equal to its absolute value, which we're supposing is less than or equal to epsilon. That implies a is less than or equal to epsilon. And from the same lemma, negative a is less than or equal to its absolute value, which we're supposing is less than or equal to epsilon implying if negative a is less than or equal to epsilon, then negative epsilon is less than or equal to negative negative a, which of course we know is positive a. Thus, we have concluded that the absolute value of a being less than or equal to epsilon implies that a is greater than or equal to negative epsilon and less than or equal to epsilon. Now, just to make sure that we understand what this is saying, this is essentially saying that if a is a distance of no more than epsilon from zero, then a is no further to the left of zero than epsilon and no further to the right of zero than epsilon. That's really perhaps the best way to understand statement two is the distance from zero interpretation of the absolute value. Okay. The big prize, the triangle inequality. From the previous lemma, A is less than or equal to its absolute value, and B is also less than or equal to its absolute value. Meaning that if I take this statement and add to both sides B, I can retain my inequality. Furthermore, 
if I take this statement and add to both sides the absolute value of A, again, by invariance under shift, I can retain my inequality. And by transitivity, I get A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B, which is what we have here. Now from that same previous lemma, negative a is less than or equal to the absolute value of a, and negative b is less than or equal to the absolute value of b. So if I take this expression here and add to both sides negative b, I get this inequality. By invariance under shift, my inequality remains. And if I take this inequality and add to both sides the absolute value of a, I get this inequality. And by transitivity, negative a minus b. Now remember, negative a minus b is the same thing as negative quantity a plus b. But negative a minus b is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Now, the absolute value of a plus b is either a plus b if a plus b is not negative or the negative of a plus b if a plus b itself is negative. So the absolute value is either equal to this or this. However, both of those things are less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. And we can conclude the triangle inequality. Now, of course, we should consider when do we get equality in the triangle inequality? We get equality if A and B have the same sign, or if one of them is zero. Then that means when you're adding, you're going in the same direction, you're not reversing direction. Because in the right-hand side, both of these terms are gonna be non-negative. Now let's prove the reverse triangle inequality. To show this result, we will add by zero, but with flair and purpose. The absolute value of A is the absolute value of A plus zero. And zero is equal to B minus B. Now, since we've proven the triangle inequality, we can apply it to that expression and say that the absolute value of A is less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B plus B. Now, if I subtract from both sides of that inequality, if I subtract the absolute value of B, I get this statement, and I can retain my inequality by uh, invariance under shift. Well, that was so nice, let's do it twice. The absolute value of B is equal to the absolute value of B plus zero. And here, we're gonna express zero as A minus A. And because I've already proven the triangle inequality, I can apply it again. I get that's less than or equal to the absolute value of B minus A plus the absolute value of A. And now I can subtract from both sides the absolute value of A. By invariance under shift, my inequality remains. So I get the absolute value of B minus the absolute value of A is also less than or equal to the absolute value of B minus A. Now just to point out, the absolute value of A minus B and the absolute value of B minus A is the same because the absolute value of b minus a is just the absolute value of negative one times a minus b, which by property one is the absolute value of negative one times the absolute value of a minus b. And of course, the absolute value of negative one is one, and one times the absolute value of a minus b is the absolute value of a minus b. So again, that should be straightforward that this and this is the same. The distance from A to B is the same as the distance from B to A, because distance is a directionless quantity. The absolute value of the absolute value of A minus the absolute value of B is either the absolute value of A minus the absolute value of B or the negative of that. It's one of those two. But both of those things are less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B. So we can conclude our reverse triangle inequality. And we have our result. We have all four of our results now.
So that was fun. That's it for today.